In uh, this episode of the Internet of Things show, we'll dive into the remote monitoring pre-configured solution for IT Suite, and we'll look closer into how to, con to customize the various bits of the solution. And we have Tim that's coming back for this uh, second episode on remote monitoring. Thanks, Tim, for uh, your time. Great, thank you. Um, so we talked about, uh, in a previous episode, about uh, remote monitoring and the new pre-configured solution um, that is available. And, and you showed us how it looks like at a high level. What I'd like to understand a bit better now is what's customizable in there, right? Because uh, we talked about the architecture that I think we need to dive into a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, because like deploying doing click click or one command line is easy, but now as a real customer, I want to do something out of that solution, right? Got it. So let's dive a bit more into that architecture and tell me a bit more about what's customizable and where. Sure. So I mean, the short answer to what's customizable is is everything that you see here is customizable. Okay. Um, so everything that ships for pre-configured solutions ships on GitHub, and it's all publicly available. So it's really a matter of you going to the repos, mm -hmm. cloning them, and then making them yours, and okay. doing, you know, doing with them what you want, and customizing. Um, you know, we picture customers customizing you know, some of the pieces, and then potentially just directly reusing some of the pieces as well. OK. Yeah. Got it. In, in all these microservices and, and boxes on the diagram here, like tell me in particular one that, uh, pick one, and, and let's go through the process of customizing that. Sure. So like I said earlier, I mean, any of these could be customized. These are all on GitHub. They're all publicly available. One that we have consistently seen since we've um, released that people want to customize mm -hmm. is they want to take our device simulation microservice okay. and um, add their own devices to it. So they don't want to use our stock, um, yeah. you know, in-box um, simulated devices. They want to use something like, or something of their own. So what we'll do is we'll take the device simulation microservice okay. and we'll add a device to it. Um, so the first thing I'll do is I'll show a little bit of how the device simulation microservice works okay. in terms of how you could edit or add models to it or the existing models. Okay. So here we have our chiller device models. Okay, so what I'm showing on screen right now is the chiller device model. So in this case, I have this chiller01.json file. And what it's showing is, is hey, like here's the initial state of the device. Mm -hmm. Here's the simulation script. So this simulation script runs every five seconds and randomizes the telemetry okay. that the device instance sends to the IoT hub. If you scroll down a little bit, these are reported properties for the device in the, the IoT device hub. Device twin? Yep, yeah. that okay. sits inside the device twin, exactly. These are tags also inside of the IoT hub. And here you have the telemetry specification for this particular chiller device. Okay. So we want it to send every 10 seconds. We're going to send temperature, we're going to send humidity, and we're going to send pressure. Okay. Now again, this is a stock or inbox chiller. We want our own. Yeah. So this is the hello world of a fake device. Yeah. Basically. So yeah. in essence, what we want to what we want to do is is we want to copy this chiller and start to edit it and change it for okay. our particular device. Okay. So I I pre wrote a couple um, or I pre wrote a couple. Uh, the JSON files and the supporting mm -hmm. JavaScript files mm -hmm. for a device. So I have a light bulb device here. So basically, though, what I did is I took that chiller device and I just started to modify it for my light bulb device, just in, in part, just to prove that you could and you could modify okay. it and then you could add it okay. to the simulator. Okay. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take these three files and I'm just going to open them in VS Code for us real quick to take a look at. So here you see the JSON file. So you can see I have an, the ID for it, light bulb. I've named it. I have my um, more limited set of uh, initial state properties, okay. lower or smaller number of properties, I think. And then I've changed the telemetry specification to just send temperature. So Got that's it. all my light okay. bulb device okay. does. Got it. One thing I didn't show with the chiller just a couple minutes ago is, is how do you implement methods? So like you'll notice some of our stock devices. Yeah. Yeah. We looked at in the last uh, episode or session, we looked at the decrease pressure method. Mm -hmm. um, there was a reboot method on a couple devices as well. So um, methods are defined also in this JSON file okay. here in cloud to device methods. Mm -hmm. This particular file, or sorry, this particular device, the light bulb device, just supports one method, which is light on off. Okay. That light on off is implemented inside of this JS file here. And that's JavaScript code. That's JavaScript code. Okay. So you can open that JavaScript code up. So this is custom code mm -hmm. that you would write to turn the light bulb on off. 
And if you scroll down, you'll see like what, I, what I'm doing here is very simple. We have some logging that gets set up. Okay. If the light's on, turn it off, and then vice versa. Sounds pretty Got simple, it. straightforward. Got it. Okay. The other thing I didn't show is um, with the chiller is we, we talked a little bit about how does the simulation run, and this is also custom. So I said, hey, this JavaScript file is used to randomize the mm -hmm. temperature or telemetry values that are coming yeah, yeah, in. Yeah. So here is the JavaScript file that runs the simulation for this light bulb device. Called it. Um, also, this is a pretty simple or trying to build a straightforward example here of, hey, just vary the temperature um, within these bounds by, by about okay. this so, much. Yeah. So I could actually totally imagine running that on an actual device right, at some point, or mm -hmm. actually similar code, right, and, and getting data from a real sensor and injecting it here, right? Yeah. Okay. So cool. that's really the idea is, hey, like, I deployed from IoT Suite. Now I have a running solution. OK, that's great. But it shows your stock devices. What I'd really like to do is see my device data, or at least something that looks like my device yeah. data flowing through yeah. it. That's what we're doing here. Okay. We're basically saying, like, hey, remove all of the stock devices that you folks deployed mm -hmm. to the solution and replace it with just my particular device. OK. okay? So what I've, uh, I've, what I've done is I've taken these three light bulb files and I've uh, cloned the GitHub repo for device simulation. Okay. And then inside of here, if you go to the services project, mm -hmm. inside of data, then what we'll see is this device models folder. Okay. This device models folder has all of the JSON files mm -hmm. that define those devices. We looked at Chiller01 earlier. I've copied that light bulb JSON file into here already. Okay. So here's my light bulb file. Okay. I took the scripts that implemented the simulation and the method, and I put those inside of this scripts folder. So if we Logical. scroll down here, We'll see light bulb state. This is the simulation. Okay. And I see our light bulb on off method as okay. well. Okay. So once I've pulled those in, um, the last thing that I've done is I've configured simulation to only simulate one chiller and one light bulb. Before, if you make it simpler. Yeah. yeah. But yeah before we had all of these simulated yeah. devices running. Now, like I now I just want to yeah. see a couple. Like I want to see a chiller. I want to see a light Makes bulb. Makes sense. Makes sense. So if I go ahead and run this. So what you're doing right now is you're, you're regenerating the microservice for device simulator, right? Kind of. What I'm actually doing is I'm running the microservice right here. Oh, you're running locally. And I've pointed this microservice at my back end that I deployed into the oh, cloud. OK. So this microservice is running against the IoT hub that I deployed from okay. IoT Suite. Uh, so how, essentially, do you, how do you provision the, the connection string or the, the identity for that device? I go to the portal. I go okay. to Visa and I pull it. OK, and got it. It's, this is something you would you find this yeah. inside of our developer guide and our simulation or simulation microservice wiki for mm -hmm. how to grab that connection string and how to pull it in locally. Got it. Okay, makes sense. So here you can the, see the, the interesting thing that you're working against IoT Hub. So if you're yep. familiar with IoT Hub connecting a device to IoT Hub, mm -hmm. like actually it's super straightforward for you yeah. to do that. That's yeah, the idea. So you can see our simulator is running. The current simulation that's being run is this one chiller okay. and one light, light bulb. bulb. There's just one, one uh, instance of the device per model that we okay. see. And if you look up in the log here, you can see a little bit around, hey, like I'm calculating my random telemetry values, and I'm not sure if in this particular log snippet you see it actually sending telemetry. Okay. But if you take a look at the log, what it's showing on screen, you would see it actually send that telemetry data to the IoT Hub. Now, okay. you might want to see it in the UI. Yeah. So great, I'm sending you data, yeah. right? So now show me what that data looks like in the UI. I like the uh, with wait, there's more. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, mm. let me find my. So if I come over, I, I um, obviously, like I said, I deployed this already. So my okay. UI here is already running. So I'm pulling up the UI right now, and what we should see is Interestingly, it, you don't have to mm -hmm. run the portal or the dashboard locally. You run just that one instance of that microservice locally that yeah. you're developing, but all the rest still runs in the cloud, well, right? Like I don't want to bring the complexity of all those microservices running on my local yeah. box. Yeah, I leave those up in a VM on yeah. the cloud. Yeah. The thing that I want to modify is just that simulation microservice. Okay. So what I've done is I've I stopped that container up there. I don't want it to run up in the cloud, and I'm just running simulation local. Awesome. So Makes here, your development life like way simpler, right? Yeah. 
So here what we should see is, is if we come over to, I think it was temperature telemetry that we were sending, what we should see is, is our simulated light bulb that we just added. We also had the chiller that we saw in the logs. Yep, yep, yep. And we see temperature data for both of them on our graph. Awesome. We could set up rules. And I think actually with this particular deployment, I might have actually set up a light bulb rule already okay. to run against that simulated light bulb project. OK. So the, the gist here that we were after was, Hey, like, like I said, like I deployed that solution, but I don't want your simulated devices. Now yep. what I would like is like, I'd like to replace your simulated devices with just my custom device. And we used a light bulb device for this particular example. And it was just a Git clone away and then yeah. some adaptation on that mic service. Yep. This is awesome. Well, cool. thanks Tim. That was, uh, that was a good example of how to customize room monitoring. Great. And uh, obviously go to GitHub and uh, find the um, remote monitoring pre-configured solution there. Great, thanks a lot. And have fun. Thanks, okay. Tim. Thanks.